Yeah, it's it's a a yeah unrefined. <laughs> so then nobody's touching the inside. <laughs> Everyone does because there's none. <laughs> there's so I have started. Well, you got to hand it to him. He saw an opening there. And then uh, seven a.m. must be free. Oh, no. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy with like 19. Yeah. 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 Like, like what? He's three months. Yeah. So he's working to get a job where he gets yeah. all yeah. three months a day. Didn't get fired. Yeah. All I do is say, I'll just pitch him. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's ran three years. Try this then. Yeah. We try to rehab. Three years. Three years. Three years. All right, we're going to call to order the Thursday, March 5th, 2020 meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission at 6.02. And then um, we will move to roll call. Present. Eric Jacobson. Present. Patrick, Patrick Murphy. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Patrick Murphy is absent. And Raquel Duenas. Here. Okay, thank you. And then the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment is up next, <laughs> but we do not have any public comment at this time. So then uh, let's move to the consent items, which the only consent item we have this month is the minutes. So if everyone's okay with that. I haven't had a chance to look them over yet. We'll take a moment. <clears throat> and then I think we're going to make a couple of changes to the agenda if it works for everybody. Ready, I'm looking for a motion. Uh, I'll move to approve the meeting minutes from February 6th or the consent. Items. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, excellent. Um, our, our agenda has changed, so I, I, it's different for all of us, and this is our first time using it, so we'll see how we're, we'll go through here. Uh, I would like to move. Um, we don't have agendized, I'm sorry, the police department report, but we're looking forward to having it. So okay. we will, I would like to move the police report to uh, next. And then after that, I'd like to move up um, item 6B after that. So we'll go from the police report to 6B. And then we will continue on. And then the, the only other change I would make is that we would move 7A after 7D. So we'll move that down there, which is future agenda items we'll do last under item 7, if that is OK with everyone. Do you have that? OK. <clears throat> I would just like to have an addition to the agenda. OK. Um, on the minutes that we just approved, item 13 specifically states that we're going to review um, agenda template at this meeting. Mm -hmm. So is, I don't see that on here. It's not. So I'd like to add that on as an item for discussion to make sure that 
um, as a com commission, we're moving forward with a format that works for all the commissioners. Okay. So how about so you can put it at the end or yeah, wherever so is appropriate. Do that as six E. Review agenda format. Okay, so that takes us to the police report. Thank you so much for coming. Push the button. Oh, you're oh. Sure sure you're this? Yeah. yeah. Well, then they can hear you at home. Oh, are they, who, are they, are they filming? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. You are live. You're, you're live. live. You're live. <laughs> okay, as far as the um, police report regarding the parks are concerned, um, I would say as of right now, we probably have less less homeless than we've had before um, due to the fact that the shelter is in motion at least for another month. Um, the number of homeless within Libby Park and Sarazoni Park has dropped. Um, Sarazoni Park, we still have the issue of the homeless people parking on the, in the south lot during the day. So they're perfectly, it's legal for them to park there. You know, there's not a lot we can do about that, but um, we do enforce at night trying to get them to, to leave. You know, there are two cars that have been there um, there are two gentlemen who are homeless that are, they're trying to sleep in their cars and, and whatnot, so we're doing our best to try to move them along. Um, there's, be, I, there's definitely been a more, um, our, our, our deputies are enforcing uh, county ordinances probably more, more lately, and no reason for that at all. I mean, but there's definitely been, I've seen a lot of sites coming through for, the, for county ordinances, so. Um, just, just trying to stay, I basically just, if the homeless people are doing stuff that's illegal, they're going to be they're going to be contacted and they're going to be if if it needs to be cited they'll be cited so and county ordinances is that um, my apologies city ordinance a city, okay yes city ordinances just so. curious <laughs> um as far as the what the angle we're taking with the homeless people i mean there's we're working with the help of ojai we're working with um behavior health with um we're basically we have we're still doing our backpack medicine so once a month, we um, will go around with our social workers, doctors, um, behavioral health specialists, and we go to the homeless people in wherever they're at, whether in Libby Park, whether they're at Sarazoni Park, whether they're on Bryan Street, and we contact them and we bring these resources out to them so that they have the opportunity to, to know what resources are available and see what they could take advantage of. So that happens once a month, and then um, we now have what we call one stop which is which is active down at the uh, old fire station off of north Venter avenue so it's uh at at five seven 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 north Venter avenue it's where they do the um the recycling i think they do that once a month down there so every single thursday um there we basically ha we're there from 12 30 to 3 30 and this gives the homeless people an opportunity to go down to get a shower um and all those resources that we bring around in backpack medicine are still there so that's, that's kind of a one-stop shop for them to get all these resources. So if they had to see a doctor for some reason, we have a doctor right there on staff. And basically what we'll do is um, if I see someone that's in kind of need of some help in town, I'll contact them and be like, hey, I'm going to come pick you up. Be here at 11 o'clock. I'm going to drive you down there. Then we'll drive you back up. That's really nice. So, um, <clears throat> and one thing that I was kind of thinking about is possibly making some sort of agreement with um, either with the county or with the help of Ojai to see if maybe we can almost get a shuttle going you know, to say, all right, let's shell them down there and they can, they can hang out for a few hours and they have food and showers and everything else and then, and then bring them back if they'd like to. That's so, a good idea. I mean, that's just, that's just an idea. That's, there's yeah. nothing like that put in place yet, so. And how often is that? Sorry. That, that happens every Thursday. Every Thursday. So okay. every Thursday. So, and then um, it, it, it's, so when, when you drive up to 33, you see all the trailers that are there. Um, a lot of the people that are there actually use those resources they go they get a shower they, they see a doctor if need be and the goal of the program is to try to get people back on their feet you know for those people that are stuck they're living there on the side of the road hey what's it going to take to get them get them you know back on their feet try to get them housing get them on a housing list so that's that's exciting yeah so there's actually a lot of i mean the, the police department's working with um i mean i probably go by the help of ohio once or twice a week uh talk to them um so we have a good partnership going right now okay. between the County of Ventura, Ojai Police Department, and the Help of Ojai. Great. So Help of Ojai helps with the transportation too? No, I, I, haven't, I haven't reached out to them about that. That's just, an, that's, the Help of Ojai basically is just, like, so say I, I, there's a homeless person in Libby Park, you know, I yeah. contact him. I say, hey, you know, like, what can we do to try to make your situation better? Hey, I'd like you to go meet with Whitney over at the Help of Ojai. And sometimes I'll go over and meet with him, with her, and we say, okay, what are some small goals that we can try to achieve to try to kind of get you moving forward? 
Mm-hmm. You know, do you, do you need a haircut? Do you need some glasses? Do you need a, to work on a resume so we can get you a job? You know, that's, that's kind of the partnership we're doing with the help of all high. Or if they say, hey, like we're, we're looking for this person because we're trying to offer them services. Have you seen them? Myself and the other deputies that are, that are in the public all the time sometimes see these people a lot more often than, than they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it just, it, it, it gets, it, the same thing with the county of Ventura too. They'll call us up and say, hey, we're trying to offer this person services, but we haven't seen them in three months. Are they still in the Ohio area? If they are, where are they? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so myself and some other deputies will, will go out and find the people and say, hey, the county's trying to find you. They got some resources for you. Let's, let's make this whole thing work. How many people in the homeless area that you, you know, work with are, have, have transportation? I would say out of, say, 10%. Mm. I, don't, I mean, it's that's probably a major problem, wouldn't it be? Well, it, it's getting up there. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, if you look at um, your your standard homeless person in town, I mean, most of them don't have transportation. Right. You know, they take the trolley. They do take the trolley. Yeah, take the trolley, and they um, uh, sometimes they'll the take the trolley goes up there. Doesn't they'll take it? the bus. Or the bus. If they have money for it. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. But sometimes these programs, like the um, like the one stop program. If we want them to go see a doctor in Ventura, the one-stop program will give them a bus pass to get them there, and then their, uh, their bus pass to come back is on the other side. Okay. So that they, they have to, they, they basically, we don't want to be giving out free rides unless they're actually using it to kind of improve their situation. Yeah. So. About how many now are in the, that, that you can kind of give a estimate? Uh, you, a, num- a number of homeless, number. And, and so I would say. Those that are using this. You know, if you, have you been to the, um, the help of Ohio in the morning time? Yes. So you see how many people come in. Yes. Um, I would say out of the people we contact, um, I would say f- maybe 15-ish we were actively working with trying to kind of better their situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it changes all the time. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people, people will go away for a while. We won't see them for a few months. And, and we start working with someone else that's new that comes in. Or if someone new that comes in, say they come from Ventura, they come from Santa Barbara, why are they up here? You know, what's their goal for being here? You know, and and see how we can help them, whether they're move along to wherever they need to go, or, or help them out with the resources that we have them here. Yeah, I brought this up at the last meeting, so I'm just going to bring it up again with you. Um, the number of homeless people that surround the library. Mm-hmm. Now, would they go to help of Ojai to? be in contact with somebody like you on a Thursday to go up and have a shower and whatever? They could. I mean, I've, the, now we'll use two, the other night, I, I work nights now. So I worked, okay. um, the other night, my first call out the gate was a call at the library. Yeah. And there's two guys just basically sleeping in front of the library. Yeah. So um, basically we, if, if, they're, if they're doing anything illegal, then, I mean, we, we can cite them for it. Um, if we're just saying, hey, you, if they're being disruptive and we want to just move them along, the, the, the issue with something like that is if you move them along, they're going to go somewhere. Yeah. You know, so the question is, it's like, at, w- at what point do you, if you move them out of the library, um, they're going to go stay somewhere else, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just, it, it, and maybe it's on someone's porch, maybe it's someone's neighborhood. So it just, it's, it's, as far as the library is concerned, I mean, I, there's definitely, I mean, they don't, the, the homeless people used to stay in, the, in Libby Park quite a bit, and they've since been kind of moved out of Libby Park. Um, and so they're going to fall somewhere along the ways, you know, and it's just a matter of the, the library seems to be someplace where they're, 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 they're getting together a little bit more than, than, than normal now. So. Yeah. Well, my, my concern is still there with children mm-hmm. um, because I have witnessed, you know, where a lot of the parents are kind of apprehensive to bring the kids for a program that is at the library because okay. they have to go through, you know, numerous unfortunate homeless people to okay. get there. And um, so they wouldn't dare drop them off. They just walk them up to the library to whatever program it is. So that's that's my concern. Okay. I mean, we can, we can... <clears throat> We'll talk to the library as far as what their rules and regulations are yeah. out front. I mean, I know there's, there's obviously there's no smoking, there's no drinking, right. you know. So if people are violating those, they could be cited and they could be moved along. Uh-huh. Um, but, I mean, if, if we want to do, you, you don't want to do, they can't really do a no loitering because it's a library. You know, right. people go out there to read and spend time. So, But you have to distinguish between who's just 
living out in front and who's who's actually there to read a book and enjoy I know, the quiet it's difficult. time. Yep. So it's it's it's, it's it's just kind of a fine line. So yeah, it is. Um, but I, I like I said, I mean we 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 do get called there quite a bit. I mean if there's a disruption, people have no problem calling. You know, so yeah. we'll go and contact him and we contacted someone who was intoxicated and we moved him over. we said hey he wasn't to the point where he had to go to jail he, he wasn't illegally drunk at that point but he was creating disturbance so we moved him along i said yeah you right. got you got to go yep. so um but i mean as far as if if it does get to the point like um if you remember i would say back maybe a year there's a lot of homeless people at gazebo yeah and so we basically said we just we said hey there's no we, we strictly enforce those rules and we move the people along. Now the gazebo. I mean, as far as I, every time I've looked, I mean, I've never. It's it's just it's just families in there, and that's it. Right. So. Right. That's true. But I mean, the people, the homeless people, are going to fall somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's just now it's just, and they have every right to be walking around and, and being in, in in the public Absolutely. as long as they're following the rules, just like everybody else. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming. <clears throat> yeah. I have one other question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, since we are live and have a lot of parents watching, can you comment on, on, even though it didn't happen in a park, I think it's likely to, if it occurs again, could happen where a lot of children are. There was a contact with a Matilla Hall student, and a, um, um, I'm not sure if it was a male or female, being asked to get in the car yesterday. Yesterday? I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know anything about it. Okay. Yeah, I have to, I have to research it. I okay. mean, I just, unfortunately, I didn't work yesterday, so... Um, if you'd like, I mean, I can, I can research and I can, I can have for no, next week. No, I just thought you. if you knew, if you had information, always I want to educate about strangers and their parts. Yeah, sorry, I did, I was. No, but okay. that yeah. was all really helpful. So was there, you. um, did just, you maybe you can educate me on it. I mean, it would, um. We just, um, uh, all the parents, um, through OUSD's, um, information system, they call it Parent Square, mm -hmm. um, received a notice from the superintendent yesterday that there was an incident at, um. Matilla, I, I was either near or at Matilla Hall, and it was around bus pickup time, I believe. Yeah, and, it was after um, school. It's after school, and I'm not sure if it's male or female, but they were um, confronted by a, a male driver in a black Honda okay. and told to get in the car. And the student um, used the see something, say something protocol and alerted the um, teachers and the principal. Okay. And then I think the bus driver intervened as well, and the car drove off. So I know there was an investigation according to the information that the parents okay. were provided. But um, being in charge of the parks, I think it's just something that, that you know, happened at the school, obviously, you know, a yeah. place where there's a lot of students. And our parks are basically, you know, they migrate a lot from Matillaha or Nordoff to Sarasoti for sports and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I know there, um, the message said that they were going to be doing some extra patrol in the area so i don't know I, i'm I, I just i want all the parents to feel safe when they're dropping their kid i mean you know a lot of parents do curbside drop-offs yeah and um you know we sometimes become complacent uh, in our small town so i'm sure that your deputies are on top of it but just for everybody watching just the reassurance that you know that there's extra patrol given the okay the yeah situation. I'll, I'll i'll definitely bring that up to all the, the deputies and we the have a lot of sports sergeant. starting like a lot of sports are ending right now and yeah. practices are going on when are your when day. when's kind of your busiest sorry. times renee as far as practice field at after school yeah i mean pretty much from like three o'clock to like seven o'clock exactly Just, even yeah. while well, softball's going till seven there's seven evening we at sarzati we have lights so mm -hmm. they do go on they go on that. until probably like what about about 8 30 or 30 um closer to eight eight yeah. ish yeah okay well no we can definitely do some extra patrol and sarah i mean the, the mainly for the sports are at sarzati park and then you you have some i know there's some tennis going on at libby park in the bottom courts mm -hmm. there's some there's some there's some lessons so are they playing at night at libby too Use, are they using the lights at Libby this time for tennis? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Yeah. yes. With yep. the kids. Yep. Yeah. And then I'll. Uh, that I'll won't be too late because with the change of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Definitely, Sarasoti has late, um, sometimes till eightish, and, and then there's the cleanup time. So there's you know a few kids linger around because their parents are coaches. Okay. Have soccer, softball, and tennis. I know Nordoff has, um, I think, football going on, too, and I think they might on. even have some other stuff going yeah. on. Matoha doesn't have the lights, though, so that just ends before dark. Okay. But just a lot of activities um, with the kids after school okay. in the parks. I know that your department is aware of this. Um, as of this morning, um, the commission is not, um, but we had our quick start uh, tennis courts vandalized. Oh, no. Oh. Um, 
and so they're when investigating they're looking at the cameras it, it happened anytime between Sunday and this morning so oh. they're reviewing cameras and just let the public know and the commissioners know that we're on it and uh, the Ojo Tennis Club is going to um, go ahead and they're wonderful they're gonna purchase they really us uh, purchase a new net but public works um, I'm waiting to hear from Greg it, they have to investigate it to see if there's any welding or anything that has to be done we have some pictures of it how was it how we was it really um, vandalized it was it ripped down or was it they uh, just graffiti? ripped it out so I'm oh. not sh yeah out of the so, out of the, and base? the sleeve is com so ripped too Whoa. and so the net the sleeve and then we're not sure if there was any damage to um, the wires on the there wires, that yes it. right so, uh, we will to get go. that taken care of as, as a group effort. So it started just, somewhere between sun. It began last Sunday. And, last and, Sunday. Um, Scott, our, yep. our um, tennis pro, yep. saw it this morning. Oh, so, so today is what? Yeah, and then I sent an email around to IT and Public oh. Works and, mm -hmm. um, and the <sighs> chief. And so we'll know more next time on that. So today, so, so between, they said between Sunday and... Mm -hmm. There, there hasn't been anyone down there in between that can... There has. Um, it's just the tennis pro isn't always looking right at that. If you've mm -hmm. been there to see the quick mm -hmm. start tennis nets, yeah. So sometimes they just don't look at that specific area yeah. on yeah. the no, side, and, and yeah. they didn't. And, yeah. you know, he'll, he said he'll... Plus staff, you know, he's going to help us, like, really look more and pay attention to that and we're hoping that the cameras will give us some leads so so the uh <laughs> but the uh the sheriff's department did come out and take a report um so i i've been communicating with the chief all day okay and um i believe that he's calling scott and then he can use me as a reference too but i think he's doing the police report with scott with our tennis pro okay yeah you just never know what you're gonna learn when you come to the parks. I know, commission. right? It's right. Learn, to learn too. <laughs> Ryan, did you have a question? Yeah. Well, I, first of all, thanks for the, the update. Yeah. Yes, the definitely. Um, I was wondering if there's been any discussion of um, handling of the coronavirus. If, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of it's. I was actually thinking on the drive up if I should kind of read up on um, exactly. I get an email every day from not only the county of Ventura but from from the school district. I have kids in the school district and whatnot of of how they're they're planning on handling things. And I mean. Right now, I mean, everything has to do with obviously washing hands and the, 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 there's, there's, no, there's no cases, right, as, as, as far as this morning, from what I've seen, there's no cases in Ventura County yet. So, um, so as far as that, I don't really, I probably don't have any further information than you would have yourself. Okay, so, so no special preparation on? Not yet, no. Okay. Baseball just um, received a, we have opening ceremonies in two weeks and a local doctor gave an opinion just to, um, to help guide us. Traditionally, the you know baseball teams come out and they all high five and do a tunnel. So um, his suggestion was, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of sports are starting right now and you, you after your game, that's so traditional to do the, you know, congratulate the team. And um, he's encouraging. Um, yeah you know, air waves and mm -hmm. there's a lot um, of elbow, the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. because the elbow. that really is the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the hand to hand contact is mm -hmm. one of the worst. So that was, that was the only suggestion that as yeah, far as park, park related yeah. activities, it's something we could maybe talk with our coaches and, exactly. and encourage them as the, as the game starter practice is over that we could maybe forego that tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before they even start. Yeah. Yeah. Before they start. Yeah. Well, I thank you. I know there's updates too. I believe it's on uh, vcemergency.com um, that there's you can constantly go there. there that's getting updated multiple times a day at this point. Yeah. So. Thanks. Yeah. So we thanks don't so have. Um, we discussed last month the signage for Daily Park. Did that go away, or because I'll I was I was hoping to have Deputy Havlicka weigh in on his opinion. It went on away. That. It did go um, away for right okay. now. We suspended all, right. all discussions on the rest of the park except for the one for the pickleball court. Okay, great. Um, and actually, Sage, I think Sage sent me a picture, and all of a sudden there was a sign that appeared. I think it's that, been there for a little while, but yes. Yeah, so we talked about it. Um, we Dogs discussed it at our staff meeting, and so there's already one that says um, Dogs, Dogs have to be on leash, and so that's really what I believe the feeling, um, what we were looking for, and yeah. So how it came up is that um, last month we had an agenda item regarding signage in the park and it really trickled into like an enforcement of our um, park rules with within the city okay. and who is really um, what resources are available if there's a habitual problem 
And I had made the comment that your, you know, the sheriff's department is available to enforce the city ordinances, and there seemed to be some confusion on on that availability. <laughs> like you, like you didn't have time to do that. And I think I said, you know, it was my opinion that that's what you're there for. And if we have a known problem that we need to be communicating with the sheriff's department, and yeah, we we enforce yeah. city ordinances all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I probably wrote three or four of them last week. So. And maybe when we bring that back up as a topic, mm -hmm. it would be helpful to yeah. send it your way. You can sure. look at what we're looking at. Or, or is it I want staff to feel like they weren't, you know, <clears throat> that the, the, the complaints that they were getting can be addressed and, a, and maybe a sign wasn't really that effective because they're still going to do what they're doing. If they're oh, I mean, if, if there's, com issue. are we talking about dogs off a of leash? Is that what, what the that issue was is? one of the yeah. So <laughs> now, I mean, I know in the last six months, I've seen a lot more activity with animal control. Out, out at Sarasota Park specifically. I mean, I would see, just when I was back on day shift, I would see animal control there quite a bit. Um, I know that people have been cited for it. I mean, I've, 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 I've talked to some people about it. I've seen some stuff on Facebook about it. Um, but I mean, if, there, if there's definitely, there's individual issues that, that we need to address at the parks as far okay. as whether it's a dog on leash or, or, the, or the homeless people they're getting. I mean, all you gotta have to do is call, okay. you know? And I mean, it's just, it's, it, we, we are there to, in, to enforce the ordinances, so. Right. This discussion was um, for Daly Park, um, a, the problem that we were having with off lead. I've actually, um, I work every day and then sometimes on the weekend in Sarzati and you're right, people are actually adhering to the policies and there's a lot of staff there to also enforce it. Hey, make sure you have your dogs on lead and yeah. we actually have community members that are enforcing it to other people. <laughs> yeah. So it's been doing really well. Um, this this uh, discussion happened to be for Daily Park. Um, you guys think about putting an hour? Park. And sorry? I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. And. Um, we seem not to be having the problem. We we were thinking, oh, we need at least at minimal um, at, a sign that says, you know, dogs off leash. But there is one, and we're good. And this the latest status, we had something else at Daly Park um, regarding a couple of group activities that were taking place on the, on the weekends, maybe a Tai Chi class or a yoga class, um, and uh, sometimes organized, large groups. Or sometimes, organized, not just people yeah. doing yoga, but mm -hmm. like organized events. And paid. Or, uh, somebody found on Facebook like three months ago that um, uh, somebody was conducting a class there, and, you know, hey, this is how much it costs, you know, when you come to the park. Um, but I had staff research that. Um, we can't find it on Facebook anymore. Um, so <clears throat> I think we're good. So how that <laughs> we require people to have a permit if it's an organized, like if somebody wants to have a yoga class and charge people to come to it, they, they have to go through a process of, of getting a permit. Not that they can't go do yoga in the park, but if it's an organized event, we want to make sure that they're... Um, filling out the right paperwork. That makes and sense. Getting the right permit, so. There's permits for everything and applications. And so we just, you know, we took action on the complaint that was made and we researched it and they seem not to be there anymore. And I will communicate with you um, if, if we, um, if we see that they come back. Okay. Well, I mean, I see that as no different than when we get the, e we get an email for the, the park rentals, you know, for Sarasota Park when they run out. I mean, it would be technically the same type of thing. You know, they, you could, you can include that saying, Hey, there's a yoga class that's got a permit for Saturday morning. You can put that on the list. So then if we get a call and we show up and like, Hey, do you have a permit? No. Hey, you're not on the list. So hey, you gotta go. That's good. And then when we have special events, um, we have a couple like, we have one um, rattlesnake avoidance coming up at Daly Park in like a, not for a while, not till May. It is just a one day event. And I'll send you, I'll be sending the chief an email and then it will go down just to let him know that we have an event okay. um, so that you don't kick him out. So it sounds okay. like we really have a process for that. So that, that makes sense. Oh, there's sense. A, I mean, we get, we get a process, we get an email every, um, every week about the rentals. Of the so, coming. So, so that, that there was, if there's, yeah. and then, um, I mean, I mean, public events we, we talk about actively in briefing. So. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming. Of course, no problem. So informative. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. So the meetings are the same time every month, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll have thank a follow-up from you. <laughs> I'm sorry? Like, maybe we'll have a follow-up from you next month if it's possible. Sure, there's we'll, no problem at all. We'll even formally agendize you next Yeah, month. right. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of writing you in. No, no problem. Well, so thank you very much thank for coming. You. Thank you. And you're welcome to stay. Yes, like to or you can go. You can go. Is, yes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever works for your schedule. Okay, so next on our agenda is we're going to skip to 6B. And that is James, the city manager, is going to come up and talk to us. Oh, or did you, do we have public comment? No, but that was on 7B. 
Okay, that good. Was that second card I gave you. Got mm -hmm. it. Seven B. Okay, we're good. Okay. So I was planning to. Uh, right, thank you, uh, Chair and Commission. I was planning to attend to uh, update on the council adopted absence policy from uh, February 25th, but we do have Council Member Wyrick here, who is one of the uh, the uh, voters on that item, and so I wanted to see if. Are we do it now? Yeah, if you. We moved it forward so you guys could yeah. start yeah. off with I'll a. Defer to you. Yeah, since. Uh, we'll do nine now. So I'm the, I, was, I made the motion, and uh, Mayor and I worked on a, a little ad hoc, ad hoc committee to work out the wording of the policy. And so the intent is number one, to have a policy without singling out individuals, because um, the way it was set up um, in order to say, okay, somebody is having too many absences and we need to, you know, it had to be brought up by name and discussed by name. And we really, that was awkward, to say the least. And so what we decided to do is to say, well, we have an attendance policy. And so let's just try to set up something that is, that will just trigger a, an action without being punitive. It basically triggers a review. And so the idea is uh, if you have four or more absences, in the latest, um, I, I'm not sure exactly how we worded it in terms of reporting per period as defined by the protocol, then <clears throat> that becomes a, uh, a notice that that position is classified as interim, continue to serve as a full commissioner, just have a little suffix in front of your name, uh, and then um, uh, there'll be a notice to the community for uh, soliciting applications. The incumbent is perfectly in welcomed uh, to uh, also submit an application for a new appointment, and it would go through the nomination and, and approving process from the council again. So they, the intent is to put in place um, uh, the idea of, of making sure we have people that are, are able and committed uh, to be part of the uh, governing process for the city, of which the commissions are an integral part, uh, and at the same time um, not make it personal and be fair. So that was the intent, and um, I, I hope we hit the mark. But anyway, that's what we crafted. In case there were any questions, what is the time frame that is immediate? It like January first through. Yeah, it'd be the, usually the reporting period according to the commission protocol is the previous calendar year. Calendar year, yeah. and so we get the reports in January, and so what that will mean is that uh, when the attendance reports are compiled for the previous calendar year, is my understanding, then this policy would be in effect, and. Uh, classify people as interim if they have four or more absences. And I also want to make the point that we decided, uh, the, 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 the Committee of Council and then the Council decided uh, two things. Um, one is to not get into the weeds as to what is excused or not excused, just compile. And that would all be part of the process of evaluating whether the person would be appointed for a new term or not. But the problem of getting in, you know, we don't want to, we didn't want to be personal and we don't want to get into endless arguments about what's excused or not. You know, uh, that just if a compiled number. And then um, the other thing, there was a, some pushback from the Planning Commission that they meet more often, therefore they should have more absences. And we decided, well, yeah, you meet more often because you're more important than everybody else in terms of, you know, they have more police, but not police power, but they have more authority over things of importance to the community by code than any other commission. I mean, every commission has code responsibilities and code authority, but planning commission has far more than anyone else. We don't actually have any. No, oh, you have some. We're advisory. Mm. <laughs> but just yeah. <laughs> the point you. being yes. <laughs> that we decided, no, no, we're just going to have one rule yeah. for all the commissions and boards. OK, mm -hmm. so um, did I answer your question uh, sufficiently? Mm -hmm. yes. OK. Any other? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. What if somebody is hospitalized? Well, the have point is that would be that, that would be part of the discussion as to whether they should be reappointed or not. Uh, in other words, uh, we do not want to get into discussions of excused or not excused. Simply want to compile the absences. You're not removed. You're not removed. Uh, if you compile more than four absences, you're classified as interim, and we go through a review of that of your of that participation on the commission is what it comes down to. Well, you open the position to the public, to the public and they, yes. they, they uh, publicize it, and then they'll go through the same appointment process that they would go through for any position. Right. So, so the, the, welcome, the issue the, of, of... The interim uh, person is welcome to apply. More and, than welcome. And invited to apply. But invited then they, to it's apply. open to the public as well. And right. then when all of those come in, then they'll use the same appointment process, which I believe is... 
The current um, nomination process is at the discretion of the mayor. Mayor, okay. The mayor decides what the nomination process is going to be. Okay. Um, he will, um, um, he's kind of mused and thought about maybe we need to change that a little bit because now we have districts and right. maybe we want to uh, kind of have nominations circulate among, um, not contained within the, the districts, but have each council person maybe be able, from anywhere in the city or, you know, Wait at minutes. large, be able to make at-large nominations, but that's just under discussion. Okay. Right now, the code says mayor nominates according to the system that he chooses or she chooses, uh, whether it be a, by a committee. I mean, he, uh, it, the practice has been to have someone from the commission serve on a nominating committee along with one other person, and, but that's up to the discretion of the, of the mayor. Right. Okay. So... Yeah, so we did not want to get into any discussion of whether that, how to count. We did want to get into discussions of how to count. We just want to have a simple policy of a count mm -hmm. that triggers a review. Responsible for compiling the attendance report, is that? The, uh, deputy, the, de the city clerk. The city clerk will have those records. And uh, that, that power is, uh, that responsibility is delegated to the deputy city clerk, uh, who's Gail Davis. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? I was just going to ask if Gail was planning on sending out um, individual attendance reports, or she did a, already. Oh, she did. So yeah, she that's uh, the, for, for twenty nine for twenty nineteen. <laughs> yeah, those reports okay. already been circulated and issued for twenty nineteen. I think I people were individually contacted if they oh, had if they triggered had one. that. Okay. Yeah. So there, you there, only, the report wasn't sent to everyone. I think it's only gone out to people who are uh, impacted by it. Right. Okay. The uh, overall attendance report goes to uh, is a is an agendized council report okay. and it's part of the council packet um, I forget what the date is of when that report was done in, in sometime in January so if you there. didn't get an email then you're good <laughs> if you weren't contacted yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I've contacted anybody who's yeah. affected by it okay but, so I contacted uh, yesterday and today any commissioner affected by this uh, change okay. although I have um, I called a couple of the planning commissioners who are affected and haven't gotten the call back so I won't say their names on this but okay. but so we've contacted them the report comes in January and then this year because this policy was considered a few meetings it was uh, talked about at a few council meetings but it's typically January reporting on the prior calendar year Thank so you. it would be 2019? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thank you. And, uh, we also will be sending out notices to any uh, affected members within the next week. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that, we've completed 6B. But not 9? Actually, that, just a quick question. If, if, the, if we don't have a quorum and the meeting is canceled mm -hmm. because we don't have a quorum, that doesn't count as an absent towards an in, if, towards all commissioners, right? Because so how the, do you? If the meeting is canceled for any reason other than lack of quorum, mm -hmm. it doesn't count. Okay. If, but if it's canceled because of a lack of quorum, mm -hmm. and you know, three commissioners say I won't be here that day, then we count that as an absence. Just, just those people. Just those. Just three. just for those people. Yeah. The idea being that the meeting would have occurred if not for the absences. Okay. And sorry, I, I, I did that wrong. That was not 6B, that was 7B um, that we just did. So I just have one other question. <laughs> so was this triggered because of that reason, because of the quorum, do you think? Well, uh, there, <clears throat> there was, was... must have been some reason that, you know, yeah. just was brought to light. I think there were several commission meetings um, that were canceled because of lack of quorum that raised this as a concern from from several, you know, we, t we talked about some of the commissions that, that did have some of the absences where, you know, important items were delayed because of the, the lack of quorum. So, so that, was, that was a big issue. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I also respect that, I appreciate that it kind of takes the confrontational element out of the commissions. So yeah. I appreciate just yeah. kind of standardizing this and having it automated. And, and yeah, being, being fair about it and and not punitive. I mean, the person can still continues. It's just, it triggers a review. So. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. So this is new on our agenda. We're going to go to item five, which is disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. Um, that would, we've not done this before. We're going to have anyone report anything they've done that they think would 
necessarily be reported. And I know that I did a site visit with staff um, at Sarzoti Park to look at the layout of the sports courts. Uh, I also had a meeting at the city uh, about some of the agenda items with uh, the recreation and city manager. So I think that's how we do that. Does anyone else have any ex parte uh, contacts or site visits to disclose? Well, I visited the, um, I don't know if this counts or not, but <clears throat> okay. I visited the pickleball court. Oh, there's lots of them. <laughs> to see <coughs> there wasn't anybody playing there at the time, so <laughs> I couldn't ask any questions, Sorry. but it certainly is a beautiful <clears throat> spot. That's all I have to say. They're very lucky to have it. So, and I think uh, no one else? I, I, oh, I, I, I visited the Sarzadi Park. I reviewed the layout. Excellent. Okay. I, I used the bathroom at Libby Park. Well done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good disclosure. I'm at Sarzadi Park almost every day. Okay. So, oh, yeah, there okay. you go. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, expert. <laughs> that being said, okay. So, um, I think, I think I'm, 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 not, I'm not thrilled about that. Well, that agenda we're item gonna being agenda is without get to timely the, notice. We're going to so. get to a discussion of that agenda item I know, later. I, but for tonight, no we'll go through I can't through even the... remember if I had breakfast this morning, I, so there's no way I can remember how many days I went to the park, but they were <laughs> n numerous to many of the parks, so I'll have a report next month. We will. I, I believe, um, we will, we will, we'll, I may. Should we discuss really this quick. when we go to the agenda discussion of the this agenda? <laughs> or do you want to do it now? No, I, I was just going to make a quick comment. I had the same question, and it was I was wondering what it was, and it was explained to me that you only have to report if you're meeting with more than if you're meeting with another commissioner. Um, and I, I I'll say I asked for it to be removed uh, yeah, and I today, too. so it'll be removed next next. It's meeting. not going to be on there. We, we, it's already <laughs> been. There we go. Right. But that will come up under our review of the new agenda. Okay. I think we'll, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so five. It's on there. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> on to uh, presentations, action, and discussion items. We'll start with 6A, which is the election of a new chair. Would anyone like to nominate How themselves? <laughs> <laughs> we'll open discussion. Silence. Well, <laughs> I'll speak up. I think if Sage is um, willing to do it for another term, I think it would be great to have her since she's, you know, she's worked hard on this and she's definitely knows more about um, what we as a commission should be doing and how we should be, because we are in the advisory position and how we should advise council. So I don't know if anyone else <coughs> feels that way, but that's the way I feel. I second that opinion, Third. if Sage is willing. I'm willing to <laughs> make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, for Sage to continue. continue in her role as chair. Yes. Or I guess we need to do a nomination and then a vote. Is that... I nominate Sage. There you go. Continue as chair for the specify and I'll second. for another term. And then we've got a second. For another full term. Second. Entire full term. Yeah. Entire full term. Marguerite Entire. second it. Yes. 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 Uh, and then all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right. So now we need a vice chair. I will self uh, I will self nominate as vice chair unless someone else is, is um then I'll second interested. that. <laughs> I'm happy to do that if that unless someone else would like to Okay, Vice so chair. she's nominated and motioned herself in. Okay, uh, and I'll I'll second. second. Perfect, and then all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I will continue as chair, and uh, Susie will continue as vice chair. Okay, done. Um, I just one comment. I yeah, Sage, I think you're doing a, a great job. We've had very concise meetings, yep. and I think we've gotten a lot done. <laughs> um, I would like to encourage someone else to do this come next year, because it yep. has been hard to. Yes get engagement from the, the full commission, and it seems like this is something we should be sharing as a responsibility. I would agree. I agree. Susie's I like ready I, next year. I feel like I'm getting another my year. feet wet, okay. and we okay. discussed it. I'm going to remember uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I said I felt like I just wasn't quite ready. I, I did fill in for Sage when she was ill. and did an excellent um, job. So I got a little taste. Great. I think I'll be ready to come next, next term. 
Okay, and then the next one is going to be super quick okay. because we are not discussing it tonight. It's moving forward. We don't have everything we need. Uh, we're just not ready yet. So we're going to table that to a future agenda item. I'm sorry. For the we're, the so new cancellation we, policy. Okay, great. Do you, yeah. So do we're you moving any? that item to 7A, um, which will be, yeah, so we're moving that to 7A. Okay. 6B goes to 7A. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything for us to, re to review at all to take back or draft? Not, not yet. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. It was just, it, it was, there's some confusion and we're okay. just going to wait That's until fine. we're really ready. Great. Uh, and so then we're on to um, C. C, which is the multi sport courts at Sarzodi Park. Greg, you're up. Okay. Uh, good <laughs> evening. All right. Hi, Greg. Uh, updates on Sarzodi Master Plan. Was that, was that a typo or is that intentional? I think it was, I, I th it's all about sport courts. Okay. All right. The master plan included sports sport courts, courts multi use yeah. sport courts in this very southeastern corner of the park. And uh, those uh, plans are well underway. And I just passed out if you, uh, audience, would like a copy of this. Yeah. That would be for you as well. You could hopefully share it. And uh, I'd like to review, uh, just a reminder, yeah, very southeast corner of the site. I think we've reviewed them at the last meeting. This is somewhat of an update. So I want to briefly look at these 11 by 17 plans. Mm -hmm. So these are the initial drafts of the civil site plans to build the courts so that we have uh, a start and something to work on the environmental document with. And so if you flip to page two, sheet two, the back of the first page, there was some questions about the layout of the courts. And that's not the best picture. We have another one that clarifies it. I think uh, uh, Chair Itner was kind of mentioning, can we do something simpler? <laughs> so. yeah, it was really overwhelming. So we almost have something simple. This isn't it, but I do want to highlight on this plan the general orientation. I think we've talked about the east-west, right? We've already been through that. Right. Yeah. In the lower center, you can see lightly shaded in there is the Quonset hut, right, that uh, goes to the south. The ish, and then also there's gates on the very top center and the middle fence and the south border over a little bit off center to the west side. You can see that sidewalk coming in. It's part of the new mandates for the oh, for permitting system through the Federal Clean Water Act, the MPDS, MS4 type permits. The, we have to provide a certain capture of the water when we add impervious areas like this and capture it and uh, promote permeability into the soil to recharge groundwater and clean up any potential pollutants. So you're talking on the south side where the path is and the entrance into the Yes. Now, uh, so I was going to highlight, highlight the access uh, gates. As, and, and the uh, issue was that the heritage, beautiful live valley oak tree, uh, not live valley, I guess the valley oak tree would be the better term, directly to the north, right? We're trying to stay out of that drip line uh, in the protection, tree protection zone. So you can see that infringing into the court. So we met with our arborist. We looked at it. He recommended moving it out. So we first laid it out 20 feet south. But that was a little too tight. And uh, uh, Chair Itner was out looking at us with uh, earlier uh, when, that, when we were out there just earlier this week. And we landed up. It's a little tight for utility vehicles to make that corner. And uh, Edison does use it as well as our crews. So we pushed it just a little bit north by five feet and a little bit back out to the west five feet. So and that seems to be just sufficient room to get the uh, access vehicles around the corner. If you go to visit, they've got these nails yeah. on the ground. Oh, very Thank you. <laughs> so I, I think we were staking out in the field. They kept disappearing. So now we've got uh, kind of a survey, large nail. It's got a feather, an orange feather on it. We've used them before, if you've seen the layout. And we put some spray paint and circle around it. You'll see, you'll see the four corners of the court laid out in the field now, the, the latest position which seems to meet our needs for access, avoiding the heritage oak tree to the north. And then you'll see barely on here, there's a note that says the 275 foot line from home plate. And that is the line that comes in and cuts across. So we still have another 25 feet to the court. That'd be 300 foot total, but we moved it five foot into it. So we're at the 295. So a few sluggers may hit that fence as a possibility. and. Uh, I guess from the rec department, Jeff likes to debate that a little bit between, <laughs> I think we've heard that between Jeff and. Uh, it's a good 
So, and, uh, so that was one of the inputs I was hoping to get from you today. Right now, the fencing is 10 foot tall around the perimeter and across the center, and that's to work with the futsal courts, right? That fence comes off the flat court that's not up on a curb or anything. So that contains the ball for play. There is no benches or anything in the courts, and maybe the better uh, look somewhat, if you go to the next page on, on sheet three, the upper right is the cleaner look that I think uh, Chair Entner was looking for. So you can see basketball courts in the center of the page and then the futsal court to the right with the red on it. So that's the striping that will overlap in different colors on the courts to clarify what's going on there. Uh, and then... The question you were asking though is about the... Um, the fence. The west side on the baseball So maybe flipping back a little bit to that sheet too. On that west side at 10 okay. foot, we could consider I mean, 10 foot is decent. Uh, that would be approximately the height of that's the ceiling in here. Uh, maybe it's a little higher in here. We don't estimate it's 12 foot, maybe. I don't know how that's uh, so. Uh, so we could go, for instance, on that west side fence at something a bit higher. If a slugger is really going to come off the fence, you could kind of uh, do the pro approach and catch it off the fence. I think that, as I'm hearing, there's a little debate how often that happens, whether it's uh, you know, once a month or more. So at 10 foot right now, I think we have it decently protected. If they knock it over that fence, I guess you got your home run. And uh, so if, Grant, if you- I have a question on that. What, is, what does the code say on that, on the, feet, on the number of feet? Uh, the, the softball is 275. That's why it's marked sometimes up as far as 300. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How far is actually the fence from that 275 mark? Fence is on the edge of the court. So you're, you, the fence is probably at what, 315? About, about 300, and we moved it five foot in, so it's about 295. Yeah. Where? Right. <clears throat> if the PD is going to have a team, they might want to come out and consider well, that. If people have experience and want to weigh in, I, I will defer. Um, so, you know, one, one of the compromises, of course, with the, the east west orientation is, is sun in the evening. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is. An option, or but if that fence were 12 feet, is there an option to put any kind of shading <coughs> on it totally to block cool. some of that? Maybe uh, just part of it, or the whole thing? Would you think? Uh, I I think the higher part would be hmm. you know the area of concern. I I don't know if aesthetically like how setting, that's going to look. I don't think the sun in the early morning. I don't right, think that's it's going to be an issue. It's going to be the afternoon play. It's the evening. Right, right. The very late day play, so which is yeah, probably popular like when the, it's cooling yeah, down and things. Right? And just on that one side. Being right. At, I, like as you're looking at the basketball hoop, there will be a time in the day when the sun is kind yeah, of and it's, right it's in your strong. That's a really great idea. I yes, like that, net, that, yeah. that shade sail type of material. Right. Yeah, shade cloth. Mm -hmm. So we can <laughs> consider a shade cloth on it or, you know, on chain link fence sometimes either the slats in it, which yeah. lets some light through. It probably the more consistent would be a fabric on that side. Yeah. Right? I think so. Right. I think we have, I think uh, Commissioner Weirich has a comment. Oh. Another option that Mr. Grant knows is under consideration is a, something, a product called acoustic fence, which is a roll of, a, of energy absorbing material that this all came up as part of our discussion of the pickleball, but we're looking at the fact that this will improve the sound mitigate, contribute to sound mitigation everywhere. And the, this, it has, it's dense. It would be shading, keep balls in the court uh, very well um, and provide a significant the the lab tests are about 50 percent I believe mm -hmm. in terms since we are kind of close to neighborhood here it would reduce the sound propagation of all kinds I too. think that would be really useful on yeah. the and it hangs the right on a, a, it hangs right on the galvanized netting but the west side would probably be better not to do it only because the airflow because yeah. that was the one that was the one knock on that is it's well you can put it up or take it down that's the beauty oh, of it oh you put it up and take it down yeah it, no it hangs on the uh, galvanized netting okay. so we we've all been circulating and looking at this product and I'm impressed by the lab reports on it it's pretty mm -hmm. impressive in terms of the uh, the decibel reduction but it comes in rolls you can hang it up take it down move it around oh. and uh, it seems like it hits a lot of positives both from you know uh, shading sound and containment okay so anyway i just thought i'd mention that no, this I'm is right. a are there any negatives 
it cost a lot of money. <laughs> well, but we thanks eighty percent of the people said you know they want Measure L, so we have a little more liquidity <laughs> than we used to. Measure C, excuse C, me. I was going to say Measure C. <laughs> I'm thinking of something else. Measure C, but I mean, uh, it's not that. It's not a lot less expensive than a wall. Right. And you wouldn't want a wall. Anyway. Yeah, it's about twenty-five dollars a foot. Running a six-foot roll is about twenty-five dollars a foot. I forget. Uh, yeah. I mean, a thirty-foot roll, six feet high, is about thirty dollars a running foot. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad. And we have a ten-foot fence. Yeah, whether you put it on the upper section or you try to get it, I think they had special uh, heights as well. Or yeah, you could get. Yeah, I was just saying a standard six-foot roll, but it's a really interesting product, and uh, like I said, a lot less expensive and more flexible than building sound walls. Yeah. I mean, it certainly seems effective. to make, on the east side and the south side is closer to the homes. That side's more open, which is a sun issue. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and there is the airflow discussion, you know. I, and I agree. I just, I'm just yeah. saying it's a, that, that, it's a yeah. new product that we're, we're looking at very actively for not just pickleball, but throughout, mm -hmm. you know. It would be great to see some, another, you know, park and rec that is using that. that uh, yeah, uh, uh, Calabasas, I believe, has used it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the, the website for Acoustic Fence has all kinds of pictures uh, for this product. And I believe Calabasas is the closest that I'm aware of where it's installed on a pretty wide scale. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, the name is Acoustic Fence on, on the web. Uh, uh, one word, Acoustic Fence. And um, uh, we, this came to us because of a, uh, a, con a consultant in Sun City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is uh, uh, did a uh, we have a report from a, an acoustic consultant that came up with this product as being the best for them to use, and we might just sort of not have to pay a consultant to try something. I mean, you have a fence up, so it's easy up on a chain leak just, fence. Just hang it on the fence. Yeah, and right. see how it works. A black wall is a very expensive item compared to that. Absolutely. Very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the trick might be if you did the sun fabric on the west and you did right. south and east, you got quite a box for airflow and. Aesthetically, I don't know, I mean, I, you might feel a little caged in. Well, I was just going to say, people like to watch. Right. I mean, so you're cutting down on with kids and playing basketball mm -hmm. and the practices. But it could I be think, partially but, used. But I think a, if you use it wisely and in yeah. the most in those places that it's going to give you the most benefit, it makes right. great sense. But it's, like on the south side, like the idea of a 12-foot fence and then doing something at that top part I think is nice because then you can still see in what's happening. Underneath. The yeah. other thing, too, is from my perspective, from the front of the park, I want to be able to see in. Yeah. To the courts. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't really want a fully closed off space. If you can't see the of all the sides, the back side, the east side would be the least. And that's the beauty of it. It's a roll of material. If you don't like how we did it. Uh, you you know, just try move, one yeah. thing. Try it another. Try another so, way. So yeah, and, and we were what, talking about addressing the sun issue though for that yeah. compromise of the. Um, right, and this is this is specifically the west side, mm -hmm. um, and you know. Aesthetically, yeah, this may be kind of weird to think about it, but it really just like the the top half of yeah. the fence mm -hmm. because the the bottom half, yeah, we do want to be able to see inside and see what's going on. Airflow. Um, it almost sounds ideal to have a 12 foot fence. I'm yes. I don't know chain link. I know 610 is standard. I'm not uh, sure about 12. There might be a 12 foot option, and then I think this fabric is like six foot and even shade fabrics. You could do six foot and right. six foot clear is decent for most people to look easily yeah. into. Maybe that's you know, because if you did six foot on 10, leaving it four is quite difficult well, to see under, right? And are you thinking 12 feet on the entire just, perimeter or just, just the on the west side fence? Yeah, that specifically the, the west. I don't... Maybe like taper off from 12 to 10, like just on those corners to like, so it's not so abrupt looking. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like having like a, work. like a triangle yeah. just till it right. kind of fades so it doesn't look so... Yeah. It sense. does seem like the thing we can do as an afterthought instead of the design we could uh, put up this system take a look at you know for instance the way the sun angles it might be blocked by a lot of these trees on the parking side and we really just want it in the top half or so you know so as we can after, dial it so in so have the 12 feet and then after we've got mm -hmm. it built out really do some observation of how it's where we need it and then right. customize it to what's going to make the most sense for because if we don't go space. high enough on that west side right. you, we're not going to be able to right. mitigate the sun issue right, and, I, and i think it is it it's just going to be a matter of it causing irritation to the players right. you know yeah. feeling like they have an unfair advantage whether they start looking in the sun or you know i just think it'll help mitigate some and it's the side with the yeah. softball field and I, I there's no reason not to go higher on that side i yeah i'd rather be on the err on the side of it being taller than it needs to be than yeah. i would agree have with a that recommendation for instance yeah if there's not a 12 standard maybe if there is a 15 
option. Certainly there is. I think a lot of times they double up two sixes to get to it, but I'll, I'll, we'll check on it what anyways. I, I, think I don't think it's so much the exact height so mm -hmm. much as enough to create shade and enough so that if as we're infringing on the outfield, we're still able to see making it. sure that the we're a little taller on that side so it won't be a problem. Right. I think okay. that's a great idea. All right, so I'll, I'll look into that. And uh, while we're still in fences. <laughs> right. The fence, mm -hmm. fence in the middle of the court, does that need to be 10 feet? I think for the futsal, it's supposed to cage the play the best. It needs to be that high. Okay. So I don't, wow. I never played the sport. I don't, it seems like somebody think, who was on we, commission had played before. What is that? Futsal. What is that? Futsal is like a, a soccer, hard, hard court soccer. soccer. Yeah, court hard court soccer. soccer. I, if, I think it would be nice to do a, a little bit of research on that because I think the court would be much nicer without a 10 foot fence in the middle of it between the two. Mm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you're thinking a shorter fence? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, a tennis court, you see them down at four foot or so. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, five, I mean, you know, because I know it needs to be a little higher, but I think it would be more inviting and nicer inside when you're... I agree. Uh, ...to have yeah. it lower. But I, but that is all a function of what we need to accommodate the sports we're trying to play. But if but if we can go lower, mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be my request. I think that's called from uh, Renee. If you guys look into it, it uh, whatever you think is best to accommodate the futsal, we'll definitely can trap it down. And the, <clears throat> the last meeting we discussed doing some benches for people's gear when they drop off. Uh, were we going to be able to? Um, That's another. We got another. Right. Other and I'll. I'll uh, you have that? So if you flip to the uh, and separate and a hit by 11, this was actually an arborist plan we were working with, shifting out of the drip line of the tree. But it, on the west side, it was going to interfere with potential softball play and so on, so we didn't put them there for now. But on the north side, there's a gate in the middle, so right now we're roughly seeing a good stretch of bench in those two orange locations. And then on the south side, right above the sidewalk, would be a nice location yeah, for one as the, well. I think that's between, right between the fence and the sidewalk is that one there, mm -hmm. where the entrance is. That one is right there, and it's going to go in there. Okay. So those were approximately 20-foot uh, benches. So if we had two of them, it seemed like the simple design was just this 2-by-12 uh, wood. They stay nice and cool in the heat. A lot of this metal and the heavy plastics get real hot to the touch. So it's a nice, simple bench that way. That makes sense. Right. Thank you. Okay. So I think we had that. I uh, just want to make sure we had... Uh, so we did do the move, the benches, and then we had... Uh, let's see. And then... Uh, so yeah, that is staked in the field, and so if anybody wanted to see it, it was there. And if that's good, we'll, it seems like this addresses most of the concerns beside the fencing, and we'll proceed with the environmental document on it, which is half of it is just if, the, uh, if there's any valid quantity of HUD. I think our approach was going to be offered up to the public like we did for the playground for Libby Park. And uh, if the public has an interest in it, we'd receive proposals and take the best use of it. Good. And uh, so we'll... That'll be our proposal there. By moving it out of the heritage tree, it, 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 it eliminates that issue. And even the trees were talking about that because that five-foot shift actually moves it away from the trees. Mm -hmm. the, the north, you know, there's three trees on the west side. On the east side. Sorry, east side. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, one is being missed now to the north corner. Right. And there's two that I think were about seven or eight feet outside. It's not too bad. And I want to talk to some people about their experience with the trees. Maybe when we excavate, we could put in a root barrier at the edge of the, uh, of the pad to oh, make to sure we cut off any roots getting underneath there, you know. Um, I think the last question we had from our last meeting was just about the allowances from court to fence in, uh, inside. this <clears throat> inside. Mm -hmm. And this has... Um, all of those so if anyone has any questions about those specifically because i know that was a specific question so if i'm, I'm sorry the distance from the court the, to the, the property to the, fence. To the edge of the fence that's the, yeah. the five foot perimeter yes, the five foot perimeter around, around. i just i just wanted to bring it up because i knew that came up at our last meeting and griggs no. provided us with that information so if there are any more specific questions now would be the time so it's five feet all the way around on um, the circumference of both courts, and then what's the distance between the two courts? Is that 10 feet? Yes, with a fence in the middle. Right. Yep. In the middle. Right. 
Um, the the bioswale is that um, I'm wondering if that's going to cause any issues with the people from the outfield, they, like a tripping hazard or anything like that. And I I meant to mention that on the north side we've eliminated the bioswale and compensated for it because. Uh, it, the bioswale itself doesn't infringe but on the root zone of the tree. So we limited it on the north side. On the west side, we looked at a design that has a swale with a pea gravel type surface that's flat. Okay. So it'll be flat, but still permeable to get into the, okay. the real bioswale. Okay. So the only area that's... that's I'm sorry, the west side? West side. So how far yeah. from the softball line is that going to be from the other field? Right. What do you mean? From the from the um, we call it the home plate. Line. Oh, right. Because that home plate line is at two seventy five. We had twenty five more feet, uh, which took us up to three hundred minus the five shift. So, so we're at two ninety five to the fence. Mm -hmm. That last, uh, I think it was eight feet, Back six feet that. or eight feet width will be pea gravel surface on beyond it. the fence. Outside of the fence. Yes, right up against the fence. Which isn't bad. I mean, a lot of times at fence lines, they have warning zones anyway as you approach the fence. Uh, different materials, so an outfielder running for it kind of reminds himself he's going to... And that'll be flat gravel. But then the area to the south will be the more undulating... Uh, rain garden. Rain garden. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which isn't near or on the field. Okay. And the pathway will run through that. So there'll be a flat area. The flat pathway will run through that and then to the court. That's right. You have an accessible path that won't all be undulating or, you know. Yeah, you can kind of see that walkway. Uh, it's a little complicated on the one, but uh, the one that had the, the benches on is a little clearer. Yeah, simpler. All right. So are you looking, you're looking from a recommendation from, from us tonight uh, with the changes that we've mentioned to move forward to council? Uh, to proceed with the uh, CQ documentation and go to council after that to, uh, I'm sorry, to proceed to planning commission to after planning that. planning commission, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we go to planning commission, do a full, fully notified review of the project, and then uh, based on that recommendation, proceed to council to uh, uh, approve the bidding process and move ahead with the construction. Are you just going to redline the prelim and send it to them, or are you going to get a final aid? When, uh, we'll go ahead and if it's all supported here, it's really the same plan with the bioswale out and we'll take a look at fencing and that shift we talked about, 15 foot south, five foot west. And uh, yeah, with that final minor uh, revisions. And I think what will happen is it will not come back to us for a while, but I think as things change, we will, we will informationally get to see it, but we won't be weighing in on it unless we decide we want to agendize it and look at it again. So it's just going to keep moving because it's got quite right. a few steps to get through at this point. The uh, CEQA takes a little bit of time to get that definition. And then as soon as that's done, we go to PC. It should be a relatively simple, but we were a little backed up uh, to get that done. So we're just uh, having that subbed out to get it moving. So I think uh, estimate one month for CEQA and one month to planning and then a month to Council for uh, approval to award, so that puts us about four months out before we should be able to have it out to bid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So planning, when will planning see it? Planning would be two months out. Mm -hmm. So I, and that's enough time. Is that enough time? For uh, it's a little dependent on the sequel. If it somehow was hung up in a historical issue, I don't think it is really. That's right. the, the one. And the, uh, I think the tree issue, yes. I don't think there's anything significant. There, there's a lot of ways that people interpret these Quonset huts, whether they have any right. significant value to them or not, historical value. But I think, uh, I think that approach we have is a great way to handle it, that okay. it, it's not just going to be buried for, for sure. We, we're, if there's an interest, we'll move it out. Okay. So... Do we actually need a recommendation, or have you just gotten our feedback and it moves I think on? it's uh, helpful to just have a recommendation, okay. proceed to uh, right. planning commission, and to uh, award uh, So I think for us it's a possible. general recommendation to proceed with the project as discussed. Yes. Would that be a reasonable? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Is anybody ready to make that recommendation? Wait, can we add in the, the 12 foot fence? Do you want to add in the details? Yeah. Or as discussed for to, tonight? To, to include. Yeah. To include. Okay, so go for it. 12 foot fence, at least on the west side. And the we're saying a minimum 12 foot fence, right? It might be if there's a standard 15, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I, I, I'll recommend moving forward to the Planning Commission with the discussed changes, specifically to include at least a 12 foot fence, if not higher, on the west side. And a minimally safe middle fence in the middle of the court. And to right. do some further research to see if we can do a minimal fence. I think that's more inviting. That's my okay. recommendation. Okay. And do we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Greg. That Thank was you. very helpful. And all of the information made it really good. Yeah, moving forward, right? Yeah. Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> really good yeah okay now we are on to 60 which is the capital project list for 2020 21 I'm sorry there was uh, one item you had like an item two under C if you want to touch on that quickly that'll be oh, brief okay. sorry and that was the uh, I skipped that you back, good with that back to, yeah back holes. back to yeah back to mm -hmm. uh, 6C, item 2, which is the replacement of the poles, which we've discussed many, many times, and it's moving forward. And that one uh, is just, uh, we're going out to bid for that right now. It's an informal bidding process under 100000 which is so close to formal bidding, it doesn't matter much. We still advertise it in the newspaper and to the local bid forums. And uh, so I think maybe the more interesting part there, yeah, is the old wood poles that, uh, you know, that might be a potential sequel issue with the woodpeckers where they're going to put their acorns after <laughs> the poles are gone. Like, right? Can we so, leave them? <laughs> so, uh, As habitat? <laughs> so we, uh, we're going to the steel poles. Uh, and one of the maybe more interesting things are we just did a geotech hole to check because we're a little concerned about perch groundwater in the area. I just want to be careful about that because I've heard a few horror stories and there was groundwater at seven feet I was kind of surprised. It's been very wet there wow. for many years and they've tried to fix it over and over so I yeah. Yeah so seven feet we hit groundwater and okay. uh, it's very clay material just down a couple feet so uh, these these foundations are three foot diameter 12 foot deep 10 or 12 feet I forget so uh, at least we know there's water there and we've got that in the request for bids and it's clear and uh, and this one is the one you might remind you both these projects the Ohio Civic Association very generously donated 50% of the funds for these. So it's approximately a $65,000 pole replacement project. And uh, so we ex we'll move ahead with the finalizing the bids and go to council for award and uh, expect, uh, I think there's the gap in the softball field, right, Renee? The gap in the play, is it mid-June that there's two weeks off in play? Um, oh, between it's, seasons. It's noted on, yeah, it's between yeah. seasons. Yeah. We, we have. Um, Allison sent you the email, so that seemed to be the perfect time. I think it was mid-June. She mid -June. has exact dates on that email, so That's I want to defer that question to the email. Okay, so it was mid, roughly mid-June, we should I, have the polls in place. Yeah. Okay. And, and our intention was to have the new polls up 10 foot to the side of the existing polls so we don't lose time in there if there was some kind of an issue that developed. Okay. Yeah. So that's the update. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Now on to 60, which is the... Um, Capital project lists for 2021. Uh, the recommendation is to review the list and receive other recommendations from committee. Um, yes, I was just going to mention some ideas that are going on the capital improvement list, and then if you have any suggestions um, other than that list, we, I will definitely um, discuss with staff. Do we have this um, list? And the it, it's it's there's only seven items, so um, very expensive items. So one is the air conditioning for the gym. Can I, I, I'm oh, just, we've used historically, and we can talk about this later, a list that we have plugged ours into, that we've kept track on. Oh, you have a, you've done a list of capital yes, improvements Yes, which you wouldn't know, because oh, you probably haven't seen it. And it's actually <laughs> it's like one an that's Excel specific, sheet. it's just an Excel sheet specific to the rec commission. So you have an old one that still is like continuing? Yeah. Can you send that it's to me? Yeah, that moves. I, oh, that would be great. We'll see if I have it. If not, I, we will find it for you. Oh, thank you. It's, it's out there. Okay, so uh, this is probably on, this, I, I know for sure there was a fan on there. So I'd be um, not on the one we had, oh, but okay. but I I think do we need to do this right now? Um, I think we should have the list so we can see. <clears throat> do, well, are we looking well, for? I, I that think that would be time because it's for the budget process, which okay. is in June. So 
You should maybe be able if to we could get together and then we'll, we can we can see wed the two lists and highlight what you're wanting, what's going in, and what we already have, and be, maybe look at it as a bigger picture. Yeah, it'd be helpful to have that. I okay. Know. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I should have um, caught that. But I think it needs to go back to the commission again for like it's not just you and I. No, no. I mean we'll get together before yeah. our next meeting. We'll put it on our next agenda, and then we can. And help. then we can review the mass, the whole list. Yes. Yeah. Because and the, we have this living document that'd be great. that we've been mm -hmm. moving things forward down, and so kind of categorizing importance of. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Oh, we're going fast again. I just want to mention too that <laughs> we should keep in mind there's a five-year capital improvement program. So uh, like when. That's what it, uh, Kind of what it, right. What is That's what's been looked at in the <laughs> yes. past, right? It and was just so there's a five-year program that has it labeled out. So when you mentioned air conditioning at the uh, gym, I didn't think that was on the five-year program. I don't think it's on look. ours, uh -uh. Yeah. but that doesn't mean it can't be. I don't ours think. was just specific to Parks and Rec Commission um, mm -hmm. for the next five years, not the actual program. Not yours. Not your, not your city. It was actually a wed. We wed both of them together, so it shows which are which. But but next time we'll have it. We'll have it all together, and I think I think that'll be helpful. Okay. Um, okay, so we added E, which is a review of the new, that's a 6E, the review of the new agenda format. It's not on yours, but we talked about it at the beginning mm -hmm. of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, well, so part of the discussion is we've already discussed and decided to eliminate the number five, number five which is the disclosure of site visits and ex parte context. Thank you, Greg. Yes, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Um, because it, it's um, it's not particularly relevant to us. I can see where other commissions oh, no, it is, but and yeah. thank you so much for no, coming. Thank you. Um, Renee, I'll reach out to you tomorrow. I have some information about the Quick Start courts and stuff. Oh, great, thank you. And we can hopefully help out with so. Thank you. But thanks for having me, everybody. Take thank care. you, thank you for staying. Okay, so that's something that's already happened. And then, as far as if we want to have more <laughs> d discussion on other items, and if people want to react to the new format and. Um, I have some discussion on the new format. Did you want to say something first? Oh, well, I just wanted to know, could we add um, the police report as, and take the place of the uh, number five? Yes. 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 That's a good idea. And I think that it was normally protocol to do the Pledge of Allegiance first before the roll call. I, call to order Pledge of Allegiance. I, it, it doesn't matter to me, but I think that is how we did it before. Um, James, does that matter to you if we differ from other commissions? Because I know we're supposed to follow this template. Is that okay? Wait, we're. we're, st we're yeah, that's fine. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank so you. So we just like to call the meeting to order and do your pledge, pledge, and then get yeah, to perfect. business. Okay. So we're going to swap those. Is that where this is coming from? Is this a master from the city? Can you give us some? Yeah. So I'll tell you. Um, so. So we uh, have asked uh, a couple of our staff members, our assistant city manager and our uh, city clerk's office to work on trying to standardize the uh, agendas. I will say I, I, uh, I had intended that it would be kind of rolled out and worked through with the chairs of each commission. So I think maybe a couple, uh, it, it seems to have gotten rushed a little bit. So I'm, I'll take any feedback and we'll have that discussion. So. Okay. <clears throat> My only other comment was to have future agenda items as they're um, right above adjournment. Yeah. yeah. Which I is it, so as uh, because I use it kind of for me as a as we're having discussions, I make notes um, you know for things that we want to carry over and I think putting it under informal um, items is confusing. I agree. And and yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I think that we were trying we were at this time following the the, what we were given, okay. but I would like to make that change too, so we could make uh, future agenda items ten and adjournment eleven. Um, and then a couple other things. Do you want to remove oh. the city council liaison report? We, I, I know um, Councilman Weirich's here, but you're one of the few. Um, I, I don't want to remove it. Okay. I just think that we have a spot there, and if we have someone assigned to us who likes to come we are glad to have them and i think it enriches our meeting but we know that there are some members who are have been very clear that they're not going to and that's a choice they get to make but i think we leave it there for those that want to and we have an, a spot for it what number is that that's number nine. Oh. so um no, go ahead, I think. Okay. Uh, along with the police report, I think we want the public works report. Mm -hmm. And then um, staff report. Well, this, so the staff report. We can do that under um, 
Number eight. Or number seven? Is oh, information sorry, items? It should go somewhere, mm -hmm. is my point. Um, yeah, so a staff report can come later in the agenda, but somewhere it should be spelled out that there's so a you, So report. information items doesn't seem specific enough to you? I mean, it could no, be. it should be different. It's staff report should yeah. be staff, so it should be their own thing. So if we add public works report, number seven, A, B, C, D, we could go A is public, public works report. Well, the nice thing about putting them to, maybe actually consider putting them under six, because if we are going to agendize something specific, we can have some more but discussions on that, right? If we have a public works issue, we can well, just put it under six. I don't, my, my take on the public works is I don't know that we need a standing item on it. I think That's we add it when we just need it. put it under six when you need it. Um, I think. So. Like you did yeah. tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I would recommend um, any of the kind of special guest reports, like police report, uh, even the, the council liaison, put that at the front. front. So oh, if people yeah. are coming to our meetings, they yeah. don't have to sit through the I whole meeting. I absolutely agree with that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, no, I like, I like that. So we would do okay. roll call. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely be done in time. Yeah. Roll call. So or we'll do pledge of allegiance, so roll call, yeah. public comment, and then uh, if we went to consent items, I think that's those are quick. Well, could go either or. You can do before or after. I'm but either way. You do the, then you should do the police, the council, right in there, and then go to consent because consent could bring up some discussion. And yeah, it could be removed nice from consent, and then it is. A, it could be a discussion. Right. Okay, so, so we'll go. do. So we're going to do pledge, roll call, uh, public comments, police, uh, council. council, council liaison. And then consent. We consent becomes six. Okay. Um, and we're that. that's gone. Presentations. Uh, presentations actually. Okay. Can I make a recommendation then? Sure. <laughs> on seven. Um, on seven C, can we change the word projects to report on items? Well, I think that that doesn't even need, I mean, informational items are things that are, should be um, provided, discussed between chair and staff that are going to go on there, right? That sh basically should be blank, unless there's something that needs so to be there. And then eight is, is our reports. But I think, I think the way this was being developed was that staff, what, what was staff reports is going to be under information items. Because mm -hmm. what those are meant to be are information items, and one of those could be staff under information items and there could be and, and that could and then that would work there i mean how do people feel with that correct it it's, should just be recreation report yeah just and, and then how we word that like i think standing is a standing a recreation mm -hmm. report. yeah exactly okay. and for consistency if, if we're doing that then wouldn't the commissioner reports and comments go in the same section i mm, think no that because that's like calling out thing. specifically to commissioners to i th i think we keep that separate yeah, I, I think that it is informational, but the, I, I think the it's staff report should be separate too. Is is my point? Well, it could be a number of. I think what she's saying, instead of calling it staff report, you want to just call it recreation report. Under information items. Under information. So instead of being under the discussion, then there's portion, no information. I mean, all of these are recreation items, so it could just be recreation report, and these be given monthly report. It's going to start. It's starting to sound a lot like our old agenda. Just to be really kind of clear about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why I'm. That's why I'm. I'm just. I'm so. If we're trying to keep about some that consistency, I know, if we're trying to keep some consistency, I I would be comfortable with informational items, meaning they're not discussion items, and staff recreation staff report could go right under that. I I don't. Yeah, so we'll keep it the way it is, or if that's what for number seven. Commission reports and comments I think are separate because we don't know ahead of time what they're going to be. Whereas these information items, hopefully, we will have flushed out before we come to commission with them, and that's how I see them being different, different items. Right. So that's why I don't think the staff report should go in there. But we're, but she's working. But but Renee is bringing the staff report, and she's mm -hmm. working that out ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's not a big deal. I mean, I, 
I'm, I I'm, the big thing is just to make it as simple and as clear as possible. So well, if we start interjecting one, a lot of different things. So our old agenda change. has recreation staff report updates. There's nothing really wrong with that. If no. they want to, if they want to move in, and I didn't have the reason I asked for it to be on the agenda. I didn't really have any issues with our our agenda, <laughs> other than um, the the place, clarification. The placement yeah. was an issue, like like we address the moving it around and then having um the commission um like that uh, ad hoc committee consistently being on there I, I would prefer for it just to be a more of an open discussion like do you have a report instead yeah. of having to list each one that was really Which, my I think intent we've... of bringing this forward but if there's other discussion going on within council that they're wanting to standardize but otherwise um, moving around and sticking with the titles of our you know, I'm, right. I'm okay with that too. Number eight for commissioner reports and comments is usually to go around the table and talk about I went to this park or mm -hmm. I went to this meeting. Oh, this is to interest to the committee. And it's just things that you've done in the month. Um, and then if anything comes out of it that addresses a work order or something like that, yeah, that's so that's why it stands alone. Well, I think we should be respective of that, you know. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so do we? I, I can go either way on the on the staff report. I'm comfortable either way. I just I think the biggest division is dividing things we're going to have as discussion items that we might take as we might take action on, or as much action as we take here, <laughs> and items which we are receiving information on, which we are not going to take action on. Those are that's kind of what I was looking for a divide between those two. But if we have multiple things that are informational, I'm fine with that too. If that if we think that they're it lends it clarity to break it up that way. So I'm well, and if the only informational item is just a staff report, then that's all that will be in there. Okay, so you, you're com you'd like it that way. Okay, I'm all fine right. with it this way. We can try maybe at the next meeting, see how it flows, yeah. and we can make why don't we have this as an ad agenda item for next week to discuss how everybody feels. About it can it. be a yes. little bit of a living nine, document. Yeah. We don't have I to lock like in for the year. Right. But I would <laughs> like to, you know, if council is here, I think it's um, appropriate to have their comments up front, and if they are able to stay, great, and same with the police and yeah. public works. I think that's in fairness. Yeah. It shouldn't have to be bogged down by all of our discussion items that are in so did in we land form? on that we want um so we're gonna okay police council liaison um public consent works. items mm -hmm. are we having public works though or do we want public works on when public works is coming i left public works under Information items? Informational items, unless it stands alone because there's something that we have to discuss. And then, then it goes in the discussion portion. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. So. We don't really have a consent. I mean, we're not approving bills no. and we don't have a lot of things we have that minutes. are coming on. So instead of calling it consent, are, are you okay calling it approval of minutes? Because that's really all we do. This, to me, to me this, mean, if, this is, <laughs> if, if this is wanted for consistency, it makes no difference to me whether we call it consent what or... Is your, what, what is the intent of, of the revised agenda? Yeah, so the um, intent behind that is that is a consistency um, item. Uh, just that almost every commission has minutes, which are always typically consent, and then some commissions have other items that are also consent. Um, so it's just it that. yeah, it was just consent versus discussion. That's that's all we were trying to we we're trying to. I, I have no that. issue with that because I don't think it really makes a difference. So okay, I um, so I, I think we should have a public works report can regularly on the agenda. I think it should go with the police report. How about, so, okay, I'm just like, I, again, I think we're trying to get away from having empty, empty things where we have it on there. We go, okay, we're here, but we're not having it. So are we comfortable with when we're having it, we put it on? And otherwise, it's because Greg's be, not going to show up if he doesn't have to. I don't think so. That, right. That's going to be. And the what case. then? And then under information items, Renee, we can put their, you know, updates, you know, public works updates. Um, I mean, my thought is, yeah, if, if Greg is willing to show up for the beginning of the meeting and he wants to give us an update, like, we'll put him on. That's back. great. Yeah, he should. Right. And I don't think we should have to like plan it ahead and make sure he's on the agenda. Just yeah, like the police, we're stand, putting the police spot. on there they have a standing spot. They show up occasionally. Okay. So maybe under seven, 
So do you want a standalone or do you want to put seven informational items? E would be public work report. I think he wants and to put it at the front so that he gets in and out yeah. again. It so should, we're, <clears throat> we're going to do it that way. I really think it should go um, the police, the council, and the public, public works. works. Yeah. Or even if council, just in case they get a call and they have to leave. I'm totally comfortable with that, but this is going to go back to if we need to standardize some, I'm gonna, I will defer on that one. My, yeah, I mean, I think um, Commissioner Firestone, you made a good point that if – the public works director wanted to come in and give a three minute update on something that just happened. It doesn't necessarily need to be agendized. There's not a decision being made on it. Um, okay. So we don't, you know, we don't have to go over the top to anticipate every single situation. So. Okay. The intent of doing this is so that the public knows what we're going to be talking about. So right. if we know an item is going to be discussed, it should be agendized in detail of what, you know, so that they can come and participate. and. We can be in compliance with the Brown Act, and if that's so in that case, we don't. Happy. We don't need police <laughs> on here either. Police report. We added. We added them. He's, he's we saying. Don't need it. He's saying that there's an equivalency between those two, and that right. you don't need it. I. Um, I think it makes them feel welcome. Yeah, and I think. I think. I like having both. I, the, I agree with you, Ryan. I think we should have the three: commission uh, or council, police, and um, public works. And if we know that they're not going to make it, then we can, as you, as you're leading the meeting, you can yeah. go ahead through it. That, I'm, again, I'm okay with that either way. So I, if we get direction that they are trying to simplify this for reasons of making it easier for minutes or staff or whatever else, I, I could push on these things. But I, if we're doing it just the way we want, I think that's great. <laughs> so I don't know where we're at on that. So I'm so but okay. I think we've given lots of feedback. So I will just I will just summarize and just say I'm going to do police report, council report, public works. Okay. Okay. And then consent items. We're keeping that just as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, disclosures gone. Presentations, action, discussion items will be the same. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in the future it would be helpful for us if we know that we're looking for a recommendation just to note on here that we're looking for a recommendation on the agenda so that there's clarity on that that that's just a that's a, a, a finer point and i i we, we talked a little about this but we're still working through it um and then on to information items and then commission reports right mm -hmm. you want to go go ahead renee no no we're good i mean future agenda items could have their own um number yeah right mm -hmm. there we're they gonna have, have different numbers number right before then, adjournment. and then adjournment mm -hmm. okay great right. thank you for that yeah yeah thanks Okay, now where are we? Um. <laughs> C, 7C. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be the rec report. The, the main thing that I want to address um, is council approved a uh, full-time coordinator position, um, and it will be in charge of special events. It, it has a few things in it. It will be a public information specialist with special events. So basically it's Libby Ball, um, Libby Tennis, as I decide to um, move it, <laughs> um, it's any special events. So it's also Ojai Day. Mm -hmm. And any other special events, it's building the community gardens, events, I, again, events, events, events. It, um, so the concerts. And it also includes, as an information um, specialist, it helps the city with posting things on the website, mm -hmm. keeping up with it, taking them down, and also may include some uh, with the recreation, any of the, with the recreation website as well. Um, and the applications close tomorrow on the 6th. We've been taking applications for a couple weeks now. And we hopefully will do interviews in another week and Good response. Um, a great response. Good. Um, yeah. So those are the updates on the new position. Thank you. Okay. Um, joint meeting uh, with City Council, August sixth, twenty twenty. I think that's just a reminder. It's a reminder. It's I put that in my calendar Coming. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just in case you're all thinking it's October, it's not. It's okay. August sixth. I have back a hair to the original date. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be looking sharp when you get there. <laughs> okay, and so then we're on to commission reports and comments. Anyone? 
I've got nothing to report for the, the pool committee. Okay. I have nothing to report. Oh, I have nothing to report. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, this we're is good. great. Ryan, yeah. you're good? Okay, we're good. Uh, City Council liaison report. You're back up. That's a Thursday. <laughs> um, I, I really, um, I'm, I'm really excited about this events coordinator position. I think it's going to help a lot in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I think we've been getting some very quality, mm -hmm. good quality applicants. Um, and it just, um, just a lot of reasons you know, why this is going to work very well. And I want to commend the city manager for uh, really, you know, James really thought creatively about how to reorganize the budget in a real intelligent fashion to, to support this. Um, so it, it just hit a lot of positives, you know, and council was unanimous, pretty much wonderful. <laughs> Maybe you should have done it yesterday kind of thing. Uh, so that was very good. And, and also very important because, as you may know, I mean, uh, we are putting um, – uh, what I've always thought was a neglected part of Libby Park in play again for public good, namely here. <laughs> and inevitable aspect of that is competing interests. And inevitable way to help with that is to have a designated events coordinator to look at all of that because um, uh, once everybody sort of focused on this land behind us as I view as part of Libby Park, all of a sudden now it's gone from everybody, you know, off the radar to now on everybody's radar, I think. It's very, it's very interesting. Um, and um, so I, I'm, very, I'm very, you know, excited and positive about that. And then again, as I say, it's, it's very gratifying to see our city, I think, working very well um, in a lot of ways that other cities um, sort of increasingly sort of wish they could do uh, and the support we got for this infrastructure measure is unbelievable it's over 80 percent approval I think that's going to hold up when all the final votes come in um, that's sort of unheard of to have the kind of um, um, I guess synchronicity between uh, the perception by the uh, citizens uh, the packages and, and initiatives uh, that get put uh, together between the coordination between the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the employees, the city staff, and the, the city uh, managers and the city council. So I know I sit on these other boards for other, that involve other cities, and um, I, I got to tell you, I'm <laughs> increasingly very proud of what I think the direction we're going in this city. Um, it's very positive. Um, and so now we're going to have a, probably about 10 times more thoughts about what to do with Measure C money than we say, have the so. money to do it. But, <laughs> but it's like everybody's like, oh, you know, Measure C, I can do this now. But, you know, that'll be the, that's going to be a good problem to have, okay? Um, and uh, I just, you know, I just uh, I think that the work that, all, that everybody does on the, on the commissions has really um, contributed to this um, atmosphere of, of, of constructive um, moving forward. Not that we all agree by any means, everyone, we all have strident and profound and <laughs> passionate discussions about what we should be doing, but, but I think it's, uh, if you think about it, most of, most of the discussions are about competing positives um, that we have in, the, in this city, and that's, that's, that's really positive. So I'm very, uh, I'm very optimistic as we start to integrate this into Libby. I've always viewed this as part of Libby Park, and I think now we're starting to think about that. And I still harbor um, a dream, as you know, of some bar, maybe someday, finding another place for public works to go. So that can be part of Libby Park again. Uh, or um, maybe trying to do something with the county where we, you know, can expand a park and rec into the, uh, uh, the area at, Sar at uh, Sewell um, uh, off of Boardman. So we've got some real positives and um, you know working together you know you, you dream first and then make it come true so anyway I just wanted to give you my perspective on a couple of things that are going on from a, a broad interest and yes we are looking at active mitigations for pickleball <laughs> thank you well thank you for coming and that was it's always nice to have you um, I realize there is something that I promised to communicate to the whole Commission which is uh, Monday, March 23rd at 6 p.m. is the um, 
con it's it's Brown Act informa Brown Act information on how to run a meeting as well as conflict AB training. One, two, three, four. I didn't get that quite right. I know there's a better title, but AB one two three four, right? Isn't it a yeah, there's there's uh, the compliance with AB one two three four at uh, ethics training, but also with that same all night. yeah same time. It's all we're integrating it's it all into one meeting with the um, the Brown Act and everything. An optional um, attendance date besides that date. So there's gonna we're going to offer it that day, and then most likely we're going to have to do some offer an online, online. backup for okay. people who can't attend. So please RSVP if, if, you, if you haven't, and if or e either way, just to I think to let them know. And the city clerk would like me to remind you about the 700 forms, mm -hmm. the emails that second, I yes. reminded you about. Uh, we were just sent out. So, yeah, there's, um, you can just go right to the link, and I had to do it. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, those and were you're the two. reporting for the past year, so don't Correct. turn off when the form says 19. <laughs> yes, and, and you, don't, have, you have the right one. And ask about that, because you do <laughs> have the right one. <laughs> okay, so like, then we're oh, future okay. agenda items. Well, we have a, we we're going to talk about the template again, so I have that on for a future item. Can we get an update on pickleball next month? I think there's quite a bit going on, right? Um, we can get an update, yeah, because council was going to discuss it again in another week, so sure. I can put that under informational item. Is that okay? Where did this Okay. Go? You didn't get one? I did, but I mean, it wasn't on the agenda. What's it? Oh. Oh, oh that, what's, what's that, a, is that going to be I, the reason I asked for the pickleball? There's these rules and stuff that were passed out tonight. What's so it went to council? Was that was on council's agenda, okay. and that's um, they decided to make the sign. Um, so we're moving forward with the sign, Ugh. and I changed a couple things thinking about you, and and it was approved. <laughs> okay. Where instead of you. Yes, the first top still says, no, you can't. But then um, I did change it to say, Libby with permit or barbecues only instead of another negative. So I changed those few items. One thing, the biggest um, thing that you'll notice is that the hours are not there anymore because it's up to council to decide, you know, if they're going to modify hours or maybe we'll post them and then they're changed after we evaluate or after the acoustic study's done. So the hours, um, Greg and I decided, will be a separate, smaller sign underneath the big one with the hours of operation. Currently, right now, it will be 8 o'clock a.m. until 6 o'clock p.m., but they may change, and that's, again, why we went separate it's not with on that. One My only comment um, to the council on that is that if you have at the very last one, it says activities inconsistent with the intended use of the park, mm -hmm. and you give these examples, is it really necessary then to put golf and archery on there? I mean, that those are just so out there I mean, I mean nobody's gonna the more you have on that the less they're gonna read and i yeah. really don't see anybody I, yeah. golfing out i mean what? it just seems really or even the camping if that's a city ordinance a matter of law like why are we putting matters of law on there i think it's also back to the feedback that that's it, that's my feedback for those of you watching i don't yeah we're too late we let <laughs> uh, it's also to my the, two cents the idea of a blanket sign working everywhere and trying to cover it's, everything it's all in work. one is leads to something that is so unreadable that you're really not getting much of anything across this was our our whole discussion so we're, we'll just share it again um, and we're happy to have it as in a future agenda to, yes. item if you'd like to reconsider well we're gonna have to pay money for that sign we wouldn't want well to. this one's done this oh. has been approved yeah. this was informational and this is the only, only. sign that we're considering right now yeah. so okay, that's fine well, and I, what I'll say is we had to we had to be responsive to complaints, so we had to get a sign up. Right. This was the sign that we had. This is so, the sign for now. So it's funny because a couple of um, staff people um, uh, have said once we put the sign in, it's a sign. All signs are replaceable. So if we develop a better sign, we're, we'd, we'd be just, happy to we change it. We could do some more care on that. Um, and informational signs that are welcoming mm -hmm. are... Um, seem they're more effective yeah. to be honest and and then if it if something specifically is an enforcement issue we don't have to post right. these laws right we can can address them through you know the resources that we have and it makes the um, the first impression of that park a lot more welcoming than so, putting up a big red circle light yeah. <laughs> why don't we put this as a future agenda item that we want to discuss I think it'd we put be it on as a discussion I, I, item I, I, and we yeah. move forward whatever our, our recommendations are and yeah. Then, yeah i i, I so would this is kind of like a i would like to, to see the feedback now. okay yeah. good so yeah. that could and, and exactly what you said is we had to we had to get something up to be responsive so. yeah 
Okay. Great. So we, so as a future agenda item, we want an update on pickleball. We will mm -hmm. discuss enforcement, well, park rules and regulation signs. Signage, just signage. Okay, mm -hmm. signage. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. And we are adjourned at oh, 7.45. Thank you. And then later we'll discuss if we can even have a meeting because of COVID-19. Okay. Bring it put it online. No. It's, uh, how, uh, how concerned are you about it? Or um, your health?